Hey guys, Salino Soldier here, and welcome back to my tutorial series where I pretend to know what I'm doing and I teach you absolutely nothing. Today's topic is going to be how to build an FFB or a fast fucking boat, also known as a jet boat. Uh, I'm gonna teach you how to do that, kind of. So, uh, it took me a lot of trial and error, um, but basically I was able to make a boat that has, is operated with solely jets. Actually, I shouldn't say that. There's some propellers and and things, but um, basically I was able to make a really fast jet boat that didn't take off and fly away on me, which is really ideal. Uh, so I'm going to kind of show you how I did that. Um, no, I'm not going to show you the entire thing. I'm going to kind of jump ahead and just show you the concept of it. Uh, and uh, as an added bonus, you'll be able to make your very own Michael Bay movie. So let's uh, start a new vehicle here, and uh, you know, make it as long as you want, as, as wide as you want, whatever. But uh, two of the key aspects that I found in making this effective is that your center of mass, so ideally your weapon systems and your engine, you want to be as low as possible. Um, if it's really high up, it's going to be top heavy and your boat's going to flip over and roll around in the water. You don't really want that to happen, it's not good. Uh, so from other designs, and I have several designs, and you know, some of them reach 20 to 30 meters per second. I'm assuming that's what the MS means. Uh, but I, I thought that I could go faster. So by pressing V and observing the drag and all that on my vehicle, um, I designed something different. And I'm going to show you that here. here. Here's another design. This is the second fastest jet boat that I've built besides this one. And here you can see the V menu. So the velocity is decent but there's quite a bit of drag in play on the back of the boat, the front of the boat, and the sides of the boat. The added bonus to this is that it's wide and it can hold quite a bit of components like weapons and whatnot. So it is still a very effective boat. Now note, it is producing lots of drag because a large majority of the boat is in the water and it's kind of just plowing through it. So I found that I reached a plateau uh, where you can really only reach a certain speed before the jets start to just push your boat into the water and plow through it. So from that design, I decided that I'm going to build something kind of bowl shaped so that the front, of, front end of the boat, which is what seems to be plowing into the water the most, is actually going to be designed and built up out of the water so that it will actually never come into contact with the water. Well, that was the idea. Uh, and it, it kind of worked, but you will see how I worked around that as well. So this is the basic uh, shape and design of the boat. Um, I wasn't too concerned about the back because if anything, something has to be in the water. So if anything was in the water, I kind of wanted the back to be in the water. Um, I'd originally planned to have rudders, so I kind of wanted to have the rudders to be in the water. Uh, my main concern, like I said, was to have the front end of the boat up and out of the water the entire time. I used uh, a couple variations of slopes here to give it a rounded effect, um, and that I hope that would help skid along the water as opposed to plow through it. So here you can see I'm adding hydrofoils and I got this idea from another boat uh, video uh, and the guy that used, he made good use of the hydrofoils in the sense that uh, instead of the wood plowing through the water, it would actually float along the hydrofo hydrofoils and it would make it very buoyant and it would kind of just skid across the water. So I tried, I was just trying it out here, this is sort of my first attempt at doing this, so I don't know how much these actually added to it, but it, it seemed to work quite good. And here you can see I'm going to, I'm planning to put most of my propulsion at the back of the boat. Um, so I'm trying to figure out a way to build that up because ideally you want your jet engines and it actually says this in the documentation you kinda want your jet engines to have eight squares behind them for maximum output so each of my jet engines are going to be on a different layer here so that each one has full propulsion availability and as you can see I've added a fair amount of jet engines and, and the, the good thing with these is that they don't actually take up that much engine power 
Um, I think the engine that I had on board here had like 800, a total of 800 power output, and it was really only using about 200 at any given time. So the potential for this could be way higher, and I'm, I'm going to be interested to see what you guys come up with and to see, you know, what kind of top speeds we can actually attain. So here uh, I'm playing around with the various things and uh, different components. Um, and I'm manually going through and I'm changing all of my uh, controls for each engine and I'm planning on using a complex controller as seen there. So you can see the first iteration of this, the jets kind of just push the front end down into the water. Uh, that's not good. So I added a couple of vertical thrusters that on the rear end that would hopefully push the back end down as the rear propulsion pushed it forward, which my goal was to keep the front end completely out of the water. Um, it, it's going to take quite a bit of playing around. You're going to want to experiment quite a bit uh, depending on the size and the shape and the speed of your boat. Uh, the faster it goes, the more it's going to want to push downwards. So here I, I had a clever idea to add some downward facing propellers so that when the, and I actually, I, I, uh, I gave them the up key so that when I press up to make my rear uh, jet engines go forward, the downward facing propellers will also engage. So at any given time, if my rear propulsion is pushing me forwards, my downward propellers are also pushing me up and out of the water. And this seemed to work quite well, although it created, and that's not, I'd like to clarify that my boat's not rolling over there, that's actually uh, the turning. So this, this worked quite well, but it, it took quite a bit of fine tuning because if I had too many uh, propellers, it would kind of just launch the front end of my boat up and out of the water, which, you know, would make me take off and fly through the sky, which is not good. Um, several iterations of this actually were quite successful, but... The more you play around with this, and the more you try to fine tune it and get your optimal speed, you're gonna you're gonna want to. You're gonna um, you're gonna fucking fail. So just, so just moral of the story, just keep keep at it because it is possible. Um, like I said, just keep playing around with it. You're gonna. You're going to want to press the, the V button on your keyboard, which will bring up all the forces on your boat. And you can kind of go under the water and observe what is happening uh, during different speeds. And if, you know, if part of your boat seems to be hitting the water too much, you can experiment with propellers to try and push that end up out of the water. Or you can put uh, more propulsion on the back in, in various directions. So as you can see here um, in this... Uh, the, the middle design here, sorry, not the middle design, but kind of like an in-between design, it seems to have worked quite well, and it's quite maneuverable. <clears throat> I'm, I think here I'm reaching speeds between 20 and 40 uh, meters per second. Um, the problem is 20, 20 to 30, it skids along the water, and it picks up enough speed where it will want to shove the front end into the water. But uh, after playing around with it enough, it looks like I have got an optimal design. I'm sure it could be quite uh, quite a bit better, but for me this is good enough. It's Right now it's reaching speeds between 40 and 60 meters per second consistently, and it's actually turning quite sharply at about 40 meters per second. So it is very, very ideal. It's actually fast enough that I can outrun missiles and cannons at this point. So let, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and have a look at um, the final design here. So as you can see, I stuck with the hydrofoils, and for my turning system, um, I originally had some sort of a roll system. It would actually flip up and kind of turn on its side. This created quite a few problems, so I scrapped that idea. And as you can see, the front and the rear here, I have jets coming out the sides. So I have three jets at front, three jets at back, and on opposite sides, they're actually controlled by opposite buttons. So the rear ones would be controlled by my right key, and the, and the upper ones would be controlled by my left key, and they're facing different ways. This pushes and pulls the back end uh, at the same time and creates kind of a, a turning on a dime feature. So I can actually turn while not even in motion. I can turn while standing still, which is ideal.
I went ahead and removed one of my um, forward propulsion jet engines and 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 replaced it with a, a downwards facing one just to keep the back end of the boat down. This helps with the bobbing and the, the bouncing as I go along. And as you can see, I've used the, I've made good use of the complex controller, and I've programmed each individual jet engine depending on which directions I want to go to different keys. This took quite a bit of time to figure out and kind of hone it in and play around with it. So as you can see, it's turning on a dime, and I'm not even going forward. And this is this is what gives me such a tar uh, sharp turning radius. I don't actually have to be in motion to turn. So, and here you can see all the forces on my boat, and there's still a considerable amount of drag in some areas. Uh, if I played around with this a lot more, which I actually plan to, I could probably reduce that drag even more and re re reach a more optimal speed. The issue is the faster you go, uh, the more likely your boat is either to plunge into the water or fly away, as you saw earlier. Uh, like I said before, there's still quite a bit of engine power left over, so if I do want to add some weapon systems, as long as I make sure they're balanced and they're not too top-heavy, I think this boat should be able to support them nicely. Here's my downwards-facing propellers. I um, kind of redid them entirely. I, I relocated them. I kind of watched my boat to see uh, which spots of the underbelly were uh, taking on the most drag and the most bounce, and uh, I've actually... Yeah, as you can see over here, as you can see on the left here, I, I don't have them all at full drive. I have some of them about, at about half drive because if they were at full drive, it would actually shoot the front of my boat upwards and out of the water and it would come slamming back down. So you have to find that sweet spot. And here it is, and I'm, I'm happy with it because it's quite fast, quite maneuverable, and even though at this point it doesn't have any weapons, I'm able to charge into battle and... Uh, you know, kind of dodge and weave and get up real close to the enemy, and at which point I can jump off and take over their ship. So I'm planning on using this in my campaign, and I'll let you know how it works out in a future video, because uh, I plan on making a, a more revised version of this boat, a nicer looking boat, and I'm going to add some weapon systems to it. So as you can see, it's quite fast. and it turns very sharply. So let's load in the Sea Viper here and see how we fare against its missiles. A few missiles do end up hitting me, but I'm, yeah, I was lagging quite a bit. I think, like I said, with a little bit more optimization, I think it could be quite effective in completely dodging all uh, gunpowder throw it. Or sorry, all uh, gun power. I'm gonna hop on the boat here and mess with some shit up. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you have any requests, just let me know in the comments. Um, I'm gonna be doing a campaign tutorial video here shortly, so stay tuned. Check back.